The next uh, item on the agenda is the allowance of public, uh, general public comment. Uh, this is intended generally to use for comment that is not specific to an item already on the agenda. Uh, is there any such? Sorry, Alex. Hi, uh, I'm Alex Keith on 164 Riverside Drive, Bay State Village. Um, I know you've got a busy agenda, so I'm not going to take up much of your time. All right. I'm part of the uh, group uh, Friends of the Clement Street Bridge, and we are uh, once again trying to uh, protect the bridge from the ravages of neglect and progress. And uh, right now, I'd just like to hand you uh, everybody a copy. This is the uh, record that the uh, Mass has the Mass Historical Society has. I think you people did part of the inventory. Okay. There's one for everybody. There's also, uh, Thank you. So if you look at those, there are also some pictures, some of the pictures that Stan Shearer has done of the, of the bridge and the surrounding buildings. Um, Lovely. Thank okay. you. I'm hoping that you will take those home and take a look at them during the month before your next meeting. Um, if you're not familiar with the bridge, uh, it'd be really nice to take a, a ride down there. Go <coughs> over today. <coughs> Still, well, it is a hard-working bridge. It's been there uh, over 100 years. It's uh, 2,500 to 3,000 car trips a day. Uh, it continues to do its function. As it's a, it's not a, you know, it's not a fancy bridge, but it's a very impressive engineering, 19th century engineering. A Pratt through truss uh, is a, something that any engineer is going to run into when they're studying the subject. Is this steel or iron? Iron. So, unless you have any questions, I, I would like to be on the agenda, our group would like to be on the agenda next, uh, for your next meeting Morning. in March. Thank you for your efforts, and what's, what's the request that's going to be put before? What we're going to ask you is a supporting letter to our application um, to the state, to the Mass Historical Society, to um, forward that to the National Register. We'd like to get the bridge on the National Register if we can. And the, the plaque that's on it is, uh, is that? That's Jack Fitzgerald, who was a uh, principal, was an old city councilor, was city councilor at the time in 1990 when the neighborhood rallied to save the bridge the last time. Very good. He was, uh, that was a time when we had f lots of friends uh, in, in the. Is there documentation as to who the builder was? The, no, I don't think anybody really knows who the builder was. There were lots of those bridges mm -hmm. uh, put. Uh, Pratt is much earlier. Yeah, I think he was the New Haven Railroad guy. He did lots of other things as well as invent this or this truss system. I think they were kind of prefabricated. I think there were lots of them. There was uh, all of them. The iron was actually more was more rare than the steel bridges. There was an iron bridge fabricator in, in Springfield who was. Uh, built the um, existing rail trail rail bridge across the Connecticut, um, and uh, uh, it was it was a different construction strategy. Construction strategy, but this guy was active, and his wife were active in the art scene in Springfield and so forth. So, um, if you ever do run across it, that'll be or if you do, if, you know, anything that you guys would uh, you know come up with or have, uh, we'd be very uh, appreciative uh, sure. of your support. Uh, and of your knowledge uh, and uh, yeah usually with this type of bridge you would just order them by the foot or yard or whatever the standard measurement was and the fabricator would just assemble the appropriate pieces because a lot of this is bolted together right on the site so it's like a kit almost that comes out there uh, but these uh, late 19th century uh, uh, you know, bridges that was just the way you ordered them well, it can be repaired that way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Time, uh, which is nice. And it's uh, really, uh, it sits in a fairly undisturbed 19th century industrial oh. setting. Oh, yeah, the, the setting is great. The buildings are out there. Very and there are very few of those left, uh, in the, and fewer all the time. Like World War II vets, you know, there were lots of them. There are fewer and fewer every, uh, every month. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank, thank you. Thank you. We, we will go through this carefully, and we appreciate your hard work on it, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back, uh, Sarah, we'll be back next week to put us on the agenda. Yes, for next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
there any other public comment in uh, regard to any comments other than there were any issues other than what's on the agenda already? There being none, we'll move now into the request for historic district certification for appropriateness of replacement and installation of a new air conditioner unit in Northampton Medical Condominiums, 264 Elm Street, Map 31A 076. And um, this was on the agenda, but I see in, in italics that the applicant has requested that we table this until our March meeting. Yeah, his consultant ended up not being available, so we should just open the hearing and then someone move to continue it until this date and time. You, th you recommend that we open the hearing yeah. today? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll have to be noticed again to all the letters. Okay, so we is there a motion that we open the hearing on the approval of the air handling units? Yeah, so moved. Okay, second. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, so that hearing is now open. And is there any comment in regard to this hearing? Sir? I would just like to know what the status of this is with the building permits and the building inspector. I thought it was supposed to have been removed or something like that. That's what, that, that's what this is for. Okay. So he, he'll be coming back, hopefully it was the engineer to let us know what's mm -hmm. going on with that. And does the, uh, do you know if the petitioner intends to consult with us prior to asking for a hearing? So the hearing would have been today, but I thought he decided. But there's been no request for consultation prior to hearing? No. Too bad. My lips are sealed. What? <laughs> My lips are sealed. Okay. okay. So now we just, um, someone should move to continue it until I'm just the, mar the meeting. March meeting. I'm just saying if they well. found something that was close to what had been there, we had decided last time. <coughs> this this can all be done at the, at the next meeting. Okay, all right. Well, well, I would move that since we don't have the applicant here, that we accept this request for a continuation until our March okay, meeting. Okay, so the motion is to contact, accept the request for continuation without closing the hearing. Okay, all in favor? Okay, passes, thank you. Moving on, uh, next, item number four. That one has to wait until six. Please? That one has to wait until six. Uh, okay, the next, we will hold an abatement, which is, I guess, means, in French, means six o'clock. Um, the, um, number four, and move on to approval of the minutes. Minutes, I do not. Okay. We we'll move on to <coughs> section 106, number six, section 106, review real time traffic management system. And did everyone see the letter dated December 24th from the traffic people? Concerning their request to install both mid tooth transponder receiver. It's basically these are I think three items that are going to occur alongside the shoulder of the I 91 in Northampton. Two of them will be relatively small boxes on a pole that have a, that have a then also a solar panel attached to them. And they would um, uh, have something to do with Bluetooth communication and screen picking up the, uh, the um, uh, I guess identifying the, the level of speed of traffic. And then also there would be a large uh, metal sign uh, that would be a hybrid of both the traditional highway sign, green with that special lettering. And then there would also be in, within it a window uh, with electronic numbers, adjustable numbers that will tell drivers how long it is anticipated it will take them to get to whatever destination it is that they have permanently printed on the sign. So it's, um, they call it a, uh, Um, but it's, a, it's basically it's a, it's a sign to attempt to estimate uh, how long it is going to take to get to work. Now, 
Um, they, they requested that we consider it, their request, and um, my, uh, I don't know how much our, our comments to them uh, in response is, is uh, will be uh, uh, binding in any way, or, but I do know that we, we sort of are in a position to ask questions. My own feeling about it, and, you know, subject to, you know, the discussion here is that um, there's already been a huge uh, uh, sort of barricade signboard put up right before you, right as, pretty much as you enter Northampton on 91 heading northward uh, from Holyoke, and uh, that is put to virtually no use, um, other than to remind you to not drive while drunk. Um, and the, uh, so the state has just done this, and now they've proved them to put up uh, a potentially huge sign. Uh, these things could be like 20, 30 feet wide and, you know, 40 feet tall. I mean, I'd be doubtful that it would be that, that large, but put a, another large sign somewhere along 91, and I am not opposed to that, but I do think that we should get information on where they, where they intend to put it and so forth, because there's some views and, and, and uh, uh, aspect of, of the drive that include things that are quite particular to the history of the valley, including uh, Mount Holyoke, uh, the meadows, uh, the fairgrounds, uh, some of the views even of, of the steeple of downtown. And uh, I, I think that it, it should be placed sensitively so that uh, there is a, a not an obstruction of, uh, of the view. Um, is, is that, sir? I just wanted to mention that this whole program originated from the federal government as a way, it's called the Intelligent Transportation System. And uh, this is being done not only all across the state, but across the country. It's a way to mitigate traffic by giving knowledge to drivers. So it will be pretty compelling once it's all laid out. They did put a fiber optic cable down the center of 91 or sometimes on the perimeter mm -hmm. to uh, to facilitate this. This is a pretty big deal. You know, if we're going to complain about signage in the city, I'd like to have a conversation with the DPW about these little 200 feet off of intersections, four-way signs that are out there now denoting the names of the street you're approaching. Those are more onerous to me than such as uh, there's one on Fin Street. Street. Many intersections there's one on Fin Street. Oh, so they're, they're sprouting up all over. Yeah, that's a more onerous sign pollution to me. Interesting. Let's take that. Uh, that's a very good point, and let's take that up. Can, um, can I ask yes, question? Well, I, maybe that I. I mean, I, I did read through all this, and I saw the little markers. I think that were more indicating where maybe the Bluetooth. Poles would go. It they, wasn't. They currently exist on my. No, well, I don't know. I mean, they were. I, I remember seeing this map, and I wasn't absolutely sure whether that just meant this is where a Bluetooth was. Um, recept the map is quite large, or whether scale. it yeah. was showing where there were going to be signs, which would be a lot of them. But my question, what I what I'm not sure of from reading this information was whether or not these are all new signs, or whether. Any of them, like say, there's a sign that says Holyoke, Springfield, something else. Whether it's going to replace any of those, or that these would always be additional. Seems comments. like a great question to ask. Okay. Any other questions? Before? Yeah, I think one of the interesting things is that this is information that will be um, everybody has on their GPS anyway, uh, the time of destination, and so this technology has probably got a lifespan of five years at the most until it goes away. So I think it's worthwhile bringing up an adverse visual impact on historic character. And so it would be worthwhile if they would show us what these things look like, where they're going to be placed, and exactly what that visual impact would be. Because the aspects of, of the Oxbow area are sort of, 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 of artistic and historic value. And right. people would come, would make bypasses on grand tours of, of the Northeast uh, and I, in order to see the uh, the Oxbow, and if there's a big sign with uh, you know eight minutes to Route Nine or some other <laughs> essential information like that, um, then um, that's really it takes away it sort of makes it look really cheesy. I, I would also put a billboard. 
I would also like to on signs. This is an aside, but I'd like to see more signs as you, uh, you know, come from the rest of the world towards Northampton that say Northampton as opposed to Greenfield, Holyoke. Mm -hmm. It's true. And we have friends who drive here all the time and say, we didn't see a sign yeah. in Northampton. Right. Anyway, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard right. yeah. both of you guys have rated excellent books you've made excellent points, and I think we should take them up. Let's, to the point of right. request, um, let's come up and let's assist Sarah and come up with specific questions that we would like this group to answer. Um, and uh, can, can you suggest those? I like the idea. I like the idea of the obsolescence that Bruce brought up. Because really, it will be obsolete in a few years. What a waste of money this is, really! And uh, is this signage going to live there forever? Is it tied into the to the, the traffic cameras that are operational there right now that most people don't realize they're there? There's a lot of questions. Made I, yeah, I think I think it's. My my inclination on this is that there's going to be a sign, and and um, it may well be like that right turn lane in front of uh, the the Center for the Arts. It still hangs there despite after you know 15 or 20 years after it stopped working. Um, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> uh, so this may this may indeed be a dead sign before too long, but. Um, well, why don't, we, why don't we take up Barbara's first question, which is saying, first off, is this a re will this be a replacement or will this be an additional sign? And then where is the proposed well, location? Specific, yeah. where is the specific location? Okay. location? And, and then perhaps number three, what is the exact size that's been proposed? Yeah. And um, I, I think it's a bit mindful. I'll, I'll go with what the group says, obviously, but if we start going into Who's going to take this thing down? I think they're going to blow us off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what the, else would we need to know? The, the premise of those signs, and I'll say that I see this all the time. The premise of traffic, professional grade traffic, is in a place where you have multiple radio stations broadcasting traffic every ten minutes. That is not the situation here. Why should there be a one size fits all big Eastern Mass driven sign? about seven minutes to exit 18, when it's almost never any traffic there. Traffic is not really here. So this is always. And one feature I think is that point out, when there was traffic a couple of weeks ago due to the decking problems on the highway, the big new multi-million dollar sign oh. continued to warn people against driving while driving. And the, <laughs> there was no warning know. sign put up. Or, uh, yeah. so, um, Anyway, uh, that's, that's a different issue. It, what other what other questions? Like okay, you know, is, is, will it will there be two signs, one on each side of the highway? Um, yeah. When what's the uh, what's the the project dates? So basically, this is going to be a common letter to Mass Historic. Um, this is a, this will be a common letter to Mass Historic to assist them in, in their review. section 106. Yeah. Review. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you just use the buzzwords adverse impact on historic yeah, viewscape, because that's it is planner jargon. I mean, for you, you read a lot about people coming here specifically sure. for, for the view of looking down and saying this beautiful valley laid out. And it was, uh, the the letter letter seems that's why we don't have. Second. You know, very many. You know, uh, it's like having Grand Canyon a yeah. hundred yards in that direction. <laughs> is it is opting out an option, or it's their vote? It's their vote. No, it's their, their vote. vote. So they can. I'm sorry, say that again. This their isn't road. this isn't being proposed to Northampton. This is Mass DOT's oh. road and Mass DOT's. Oh, okay. Yeah, they kind of own the they own the shoulders and. Uh, I think they can put up signs. So they can do whatever they want. Yeah, uh, not what I post. We can influence them. Um, yeah, they're asking us to comment to the chief engineer, but are we more? It's really more yeah. I mean, it's it's too much. To it's it's a copy, copy to the. They're, pro yeah. they're yeah. proposing it. It doesn't say that they're doing it. They're doing it. They're doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I, <laughs> they're already on the turn. <coughs> Probably on board or something. Um. 
So are those, could you want to read the questions uh, and then so add to them? Essentially it would be a comment letter from, from the Historical Commission saying that this could potentially have an adverse impact um, to visual historic landscapes and then bringing up all these questions, obsolescence, and is it a replacement or a new sign? So it's a picturesque landscapes, picturesque instead of visual. All landscapes are visual, but this is picturesque. Okay. Any other questions on that? Well, the, the section 106 review process deals with you know, historic preservation issues. So in addition to the picturesque, I would make sure it says historical um, character. Well, yeah. Thomas Cole picturesque is good. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll do it, and then you can send that off. Yep. Great, thank you. Um, next item on the agenda, well, we hold number four until 6 p.m. Um, um, someone likes marimba. Um, is a uh, discussion of tercentenary markers. If that happens again, I'll be at my desk until 3.30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot. Public apology. So this was brought up in an email. I don't remember who initiated it, but it was suggested that it be placed on the nice commission agenda. Was that you? No, I didn't say anything about it. I mean, I, I may have responded saying that I had a book. I think Martha was interested. But it might have been Martha, yes. so we may have to wait until she. Yeah. Let's wait for her to put them on the march. Um, and I really will try to remember. I, I think I did bring in my book once, which yeah, she has a, a picture of all of them. The and, and so we know what the text would be on the Northampton ones, which might be missing or damaged. So we would know what that text was. It wasn't a very compelling text. No, no. It was I mean, I would really, mean, it was a really yeah. Yeah. It's a question of do we want to recreate what was there for the 300th or mm -hmm. go with our own, I don't know. But I'll try and do that and bring that in. I'm in the yard there. I was in back the last meeting. I don't remember. I think there were two. Just two. Well, just yeah. two in Northampton. There was one on Route 9 west of town and one on Route 5 north of town. I'm talking about the steel ones or the metal ones. Or the I thought the plywood. plywood. The cast yeah, plywood, yeah, plywood one was plywood. You brought the in. The one were wood. Boundary markers mm -hmm. visually. Oh, I thought they were those historic signs. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was wood. It was in the basement. Yeah. But they weren't the canister. They were made of wood. They were made of wood. I don't know who decided to, um, in their infinite wisdom, to make them out of wood. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll table it until March and uh, get uh, Martha's uh, opinions on that. Uh, next item, as we wait uh, until 6, is a review amendment of ordinance to create alternate numbers. So since the Historical Commission is now a local historic district commission, we can go back to having alternate members in case someone is not able to act or is the president or has a conflict or, or whatever reason. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just wanted your support in drafting an ordinance to, to have, I, I was thinking, two alternate members mm -hmm. to act in those circumstances. <coughs> Anybody agree with that? Okay, uh, we should probably take an official vote. Uh, could I hear a motion or do we have to make a motion? Uh, Yes, you can. Why don't you indicate so, a motion and have someone then support it? So this would be a motion to um, to endorse uh, moving forward an ordinance change to allow two, if that sounds good, alternate members. We can have up to seven, but that seems a little excessive. Um, and, and is there specific language about um, when those alternates can um, step in? You know, for example, if there's a quorum, but not a full attendance of uh, can an, an alternate play a role? It would it would be for voting only. For what? For voting. But only so only if, if there's a lack of form? Uh no, just in general. If, if someone's not, not able to act. So if they're not here, if, if they have a conflict or whatever reason. But it it, it seems like it's a matter of, of discussion to decide whether if you if you 
have seven members and a quorum is four, then um, if one night six people are there, you have, and the seventh person become a voting member. The way that it's, the first alternate the way that it's typically structured is at the discretion of the chair. So if we were if we were going to have only four people present, then, then you could decide to have those other two alternates act. But it's pretty open-ended. Questions? Well, usually with the alternates, you can use them to constitute a quorum. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, for example, you only have three regular members here, but two alternates sitting out there, they can then take their seat, that, or at least, that, that makes perfect but that would be at the discretion of the chair. Well, my question was just for the, the that, that would have to be the legal interpretation of the ordinance, okay. so that's very important. Yeah, yeah. all the alternate language across the state seems to be pretty standard. Yeah, so exactly. I'm just copy and paste that. Okay. Um, Any reason for two and not three? So, so it, I just have two. I don't know if we prefer to have three, we can have three. Okay. What's your preference for it? Three. Go with three. The more well, we, we have, se we have seven members. Okay. You're right, but yeah. It's almost half. Three. We could toss a corner. I don't think it really matters that much whether it's two or three. Usually, if a regular member but moves on or quits or whatever, then one of the alternates replaces them. So there has to be some sort of sequencing or priority as part of the alternate. First, first, first and second, all third. Okay. Well, I think there's certainly support for the concept, and if you would draft that up uh, for our review and approval, sure. hopefully. Uh, and We'll trust you. I don't have a strong feeling. I don't think that body does either about the upgrades or whatever. Seems to be more. Okay. Um, it being functionally six o'clock, why don't we open um, the meeting to the request uh, for historic district certificate of appropriateness? For installation of two ground signs, historic Round Hill Summit, 47 Round Hill Road, map 31B-004. Um, and the petition to come before us is a petition for the uh, erection of two non-illuminated uh, ground signs uh, that are depicted in the handouts or the attachments that Sarah sent out. Um, the, um, each sign I require, I understand is Four by eight, and that, you know, I'll, I'll just click on Yeah, one. four by eight, you're correct. Uh, so basically, uh, 96 uh, square feet per sign, two signs, uh, one um, uh, giving, giving recognition to the bank sponsoring the project and the other identifying the project. Um, the um, city, I, excuse me, uh, businesses have by right a 90 day we know for display of uh, signage, um, well, uh, and but subsequent to that, uh, routinely would have I'm, I'm told 12 square feet of signage for that size of that first property. Is that right, Sarah? That is correct. So a temporary sign is defined in the historic district ordinance as anything that's up for 90 days or less. So that wouldn't need any sort of review at all. But since this will be up for longer than that, it, it does need review. Okay. So our um, uh, what we are here to listen to is the opinions regarding uh, what uh, about the signage above and beyond the, the amount of display that would be uh, ordinarily uh, uh, protected by right. So is, are we clear on all that? You know, we're, we will uh, make as much time to hear everybody as, as uh, everybody would like. There's no limit. So, um, Petitioner for the science. Would you like to come up and talk about what, sure. you, what you'd like to do? And Although it's really yeah. warm back here. Yeah, thank you. Come on. Please join us. Speak loudly, not for in the room. Sure. Demetrius Pantliakis, Opal Real Estate Group. Uh, we have uh, two signs that uh, generally are atypical signs, even at our historic preservations. 
Um, I think you have this handout, correct? Okay. Um, and do you also have the map of where we would be placing them? Yeah. Okay. Which, of course, is, is discussional. We're looking for one sign, sign in front of each of the buildings. Again, there's two separate permits for this. these buildings are being traded as separately under historic guidelines. So there's different bookkeeping. It's literally two projects being done at the same time. Um, so we're looking for a sign in front of uh, both of those, which are atypical uh, for construction projects. Uh, they are temporary signs as we define them. Obviously yours is a much shorter window of, of less than 90 days. Uh, we like them up there for the duration of the uh, construction process uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, to identify what's going to be taking place. Uh, secondly, to give credit to the lending institution that uh, they typically make a request uh, for signage to indicate that they are uh, financing the, the uh, neighborhood development. Uh, the other reason for us, obviously, is that um, this is a heavy truck uh, entrance and exit. Uh, we've already made uh, great strides on the road uh, in snow removal and just getting the parking off of the street has just been a, a huge plus uh, as far as we, c we felt there was a safety requirement for that size of construction. Um, we've completed the remediation of the property, so on both sides of the street, so all remediation uh, has been completed. Uh, and now we're in the process of selective demolition uh, inside of the building. I think we've already had 22 containers leave the property with demolition, mostly plaster and plaster and plaster. Um, it also, for us, serves another purpose. Uh, we have an ongoing and continued concern with people realizing there's construction going on. Um, we have an exceptionally popular hill behind the building uh, where we have now tried to rope off with orange grade as much as possible. I, it's, a, it's an immensely popular sledding hill. Uh, and we have actually people cutting through, even though we put those temporary barriers up to keep people from going into the back. So we have demolition uh, debris and containers, which is covered and sealed and following code. But um, quite frankly, we've got a lot of kids from, from to eight year olds up to 18 and I would say 42 year olds sledding on on the back hill. So we're we're trying to maintain well, some. Them. Well, you know, it at least tells somebody that something's going on, and and, and we've also got those trucks that are making that turn coming out and going down Round Hill, and the speed bumps are helping slow people down uh, when they're not covered with a foot of snow, uh, but we've been almost too good at at doing the work kind of behind a veil because most of the work has been inside. Um, so we're kind of hoping to kind of tell people, listen, there is something going on here and you, and you need to be careful. Um, Could I ask a question? You, you, maybe you stress that there are two, two different projects. Yes, sir. The, sign, the signs of, that I see here, are there four, you propose four signs or two signs total? Uh, we're proposing two signs, two-sided. So, are you saying four signs total? I'm not two you signs. caught me in interpretation. Yeah. You're saying two signs, two signs. Two signs. Two signs. Two signs. Four two signs. Four four signs. Four signs. I was okay. I was hearing signs. Yeah. Sign they're two sided. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the. They're okay. two sided. So each sign is double sided, but there are a total of just two structural signs. Correct. Okay. And if that's not acceptable to the committee, we could always go with one-sided sign, but set it farther back on the property. Yeah. I mean, we just, we want clearly, you know, we want to be at some level, as bad as it might sound, a little intrusive. We want people to see there's something going on. Um, as far as uh, the permanent signs, our long-term goal is there's already existing signage that was being used, so our intent at some point is to repaint the existing signage and just, it's going to all be low profile uh, signage that is pre existing. Okay. There are no plans for long term new signage. We okay. just don't feel it's necessary. And how long do you think these signs, these signs will be up? I think they'll be up until the first quarter of next year. 
we have a construction process we finish god willing we finish demolition um and uh, it's an eight-week period we've been into it for three weeks so in five weeks we finish demolition and then the designers go back in to make sure that uh, we measure this thing correctly uh, and then we go back out to uh, the final stage of uh, contractor bidding we separated remediation demolition and construction mm -hmm. so we actually pulled three levels of, of permitting to get it done the building was so complicated that we were concerned about designing the building then going to demolition and then having a design that does not meet what's actually there which has turned out to be a good idea because there have been a lot of additions and oh of the yeah there's okay. there's um, there's walls where walls weren't supposed to be and we, we've run into a lot of sims and by the way it, it's a complete uh, internal demolition so um, aside from the service coming in of gas electric everything is gone yes, are we talking about Hubbard and Rogers both of them yes all existing electrical all existing plumbing all existing heating it's a complete internal mm -hmm. it's all new system so everything's coming out um, well we have different ways of, of approaching this hearing process but my suggestion is that we have a discussion open up a discussion with the individual who's talking with us who's before us and then later on if, we, if they would like to come back with additional comments we will, we will yeah, have additional questions we can do that informally but uh, why don't we start off now with any questions around the table this is um four by eight a permitted sign or is it limited to 25 square feet for the planning board review yeah that i don't know. <coughs> I mean, in other words, that would have to meet whatever the zoning sign requirement. It needs a special permit for more than one sign in a property. Okay. In so is this a special permit process we're going through now? No. This no. is okay. solely limited to the historic okay. district. I believe I'm in front of them on Thursday. It was rescheduled because it's not stopped. And this would, they, these would, technically these are temporary construction signs. Yes, sir. And they would be removed at the end of construction. My, my concern would be whether the um, uh, size limit is uh, excessive for this area. You know, four by eight, that, that's a full sheet of plywood and something that would be more like a three by six or you know, something closer to that, I think would convey the message uh, because you're not talking about being a thousand feet away or something. And that I think might contribute more to the quality of the presentation also uh, so that would be my thought to to reduce the size of the sign itself are you noticed the colors is this what the sign yes ma'am yeah at least it says historic on it. yeah i actually believe that what we'd like to see on the second sign that has the historic on it mm -hmm. is to gray those letters down and have more um, of the back the back print of like the water building water. being yeah more of a watercolor those are a um, those are a very um, plastic laminate finish mm -hmm. and it's the same on both sides this, the yes ma'am let's go around so are these signs to be placed perpendicular to the roadway i think that's up for discussion we t a typically put them perpendicular uh, but I think that these could also serve as if we decide to go with only one side and put them in front of the building, there's plenty of setback to do that as well. So if there's going to be two signs and both sign setups have images on both sides, you would have the secondary sign further up the road yep. the inverse to the first double sided sign. Um, they're kind of uh, the 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 way that we set them on there they're, they're really far apart um, so they would probably just sit at the same spot as you come up um, as far as a setback from the road what my, my point was there was if you're driving up the street you see the first sign and it was about people's bank but you weren't going to look over your shoulder to see the other sign but you'd come to the next sign and the next sign would be uh, 
about the project. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we actually want the inverse. I'm sure the bank wants it the other way around, but we want the historic sign coming up first, uh, historic round hill to be the first one seen, uh, and then the people's uh, people's bank sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have uh, no control over their sign. That's that's yeah. It's uh, pretty much identical to the sign that we put up in front of uh, in front of Village Hill when when we built that Village Hill. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just thinking that it, it just it seems like a huge sign, and uh, it really does until it's up. Uh, we actually had a smaller sign up there for the notifications that would have been what the atypical sign is, mm -hmm. and it would just, the, the typical sign that's required, that, that's allowed, just gets lost. I mean, we've got a lot of frontage up there, a lot of bushes, a lot of trees, uh -huh. um, got a lot of greenscape up there, mm -hmm. um, and quite honestly, that's, that's the size signs we're used to. Look. All of our signs are that size. <laughs> Anything else? We're going to hear from other speakers as well. Um, I, I just have a question whether or not, because you were saying that your your issue was, or it sounded like the reason you wanted these signs was because people aren't realizing there's construction there and you're worried that people are going to either get too close when they're sledding or whatever. But to me, these aren't, you know, warning construction. No, they're, they're not. They're advertising signs. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. I mean, that's a secondary concern of ours, but the primary concern is to let people know that, you know, there's something going on here. Um, and, yeah, absolutely, their primary source is advertising. The bank wants to advertise that it's financed this project, and uh, which is customary, and we certainly want to uh, tell people that, listen, we, we've got 42 luxury apartments that are going to be done pretty soon, and we want to generate, because the website it also coincides with the website. We also want the site big enough for the website to be seen because we have a website that's being designed specifically for um, historic Round Hill. So the website is going to be very interactive uh, and it's going to in show the apartments, the layouts of the apartments, a lot of that. So that also what is the what is What does the size of a sign have to do with the visibility of a website? People seeing it as they're driving by. Oh, you mean that people would see it and then go to the Correct. website? Oh, okay. So yeah. advertising the website as yeah. well as and it's part of a larger. Yeah, it's don't see any it's part of a large. I don't think is it on there the yet. Website? No. Yeah, it, it will be on there. Probably the telephone number will probably that's a space saver. So probably the telephone number will be gone and the website will be on there. Okay. Um, but you know, it also will coincide with with a ribbon cutting. So there'll be press around all of it. That kind of all ties together into the marketing plan of the of the property. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, well, I would concur with other members' concerns about the size, uh, possibly the placement, <coughs> uh, just to hear what people in the neighborhood have to say about <coughs> how uh, you. people know the character of the neighborhood and just how it would affect their view. It it doesn't say construction anywhere on it, so I, I, mean, I don't see how kids would read this as That's stay away in any way. Um, and I grew up in that neighborhood, sledded on that hill. Old, are you still time. are you still sledding on that hill? No, my kids are too young. I think I established this is an advertising sign. Yeah. It's not yeah. a. Yeah. Please be careful. Sir. So no, I don't really have much else. Well, why don't we move? Well, thank you. And you're free to stay here. Well, oh, fine. See where you like, and others. Uh, whoever else would like to uh, come forward and, and make comment on this topic. Yeah, um, I've, I've thought long and hard before deciding whether to address Opal's request for a special permit. Unlike the excessively noisy mowers that ply the summer's green, or the excruciatingly loud mowers, blowers, and vegetation gatherers that mass for fall cleanup and drive us from our home, or the flashing lights, beeping and loud thunks of Kent brother excavating at 1 a.m. as they attempt to plow and shovel with equipment far too massive for the job. It certainly can be said that two two-sided signs, each four feet by eight feet, won't make any noise. Not during the day, not during the night. On the other hand, 
Unlike the mowers, blowers, and plows that eventually depart, the signs will remain. And while they will create no noise, the proposed signs will be visually intrusive and maintain their unwelcome presence for more than 90 days, day and night. That the proposed signs are out of character and inappropriate for a residential neighborhood and, historic, and an historic district is a given. One temporary sign is permitted by ordinance. Why is that not sufficient? Why a separate sign for People's Bank? Better one sign to include the logo, logo of People's Bank and, if I may be so bold, the logo of the Massachusetts Historical Commission. Why more than the permitted 90 days? And why so huge? Why not locate the signs on King Street, perhaps in the site of People's Bank? There, the proposed signs will stand tall in their commercial glory and grab the attention of ever so many drivers, ever so many potential renters, day and night. Alas, we, Nick, I, several neighbors, cannot reasonably argue against what is permitted by ordinance and expect to be heard. But we can and do object strenuously to attempts to exceed the limits of the ordinance against two huge and unattractive commercial signs visually screaming at us for an excess of 90 days, day and night. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, I'm, I, I'm the uh, Chief Financial Officer for Clark Schools. And I, I guess I just want to say that um, we don't have a concern or a problem with having signs. I think we shared um, Demetrius's concern about the sledding for years and years and years and the safety hazard that is. In any small way that that is addressed with these signs or not these signs, we don't have a concern with having them there. I, I, I just wanted to say that we, we don't. And we're next Thank door, you. so we... Well, that's a valuable yeah. comment. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm another neighbor who lived diagonally across the street. Uh, and uh, it seems to me that uh, a sign within the rules that identifies the bank ought to do the job. People don't speed past it because the bumps ensure that they won't speed past it. They go very slowly. The signs are quite easily read. And I don't see any reason why we should begin now to make exceptions to the rules. That's the beginning of a process that leads to one exception after another. The rules are adequate, they're there for a reason, let's follow them. No comment. Okay. All right, well, uh, any response to Yeah, I guess, you know, everybody's comments are valid. I mean, uh, we've, we've come in here and I think that we have kept every promise we said we've kept. The biggest concern at our planning meeting with the neighbors was a traffic on that street, safety on that street, plowing on that street, ice collection on that street. We executed everything we said we would do and if you drive up there on the worst snowstorm now, you will not see ice accumulation on that street. We put all new granite curbing. Along with the city, we put in the speed bumps and slowed the traffic down. We worked with the city and the neighborhood counselor to get all the parking. We put new parking, no parking signs up and down each side of the road. We put in new sidewalks. We have fulfilled every obligation that we said that we would fulfill in that. And I'm happy to hear that none of those things are coming up anymore. Uh, there's not much that I can do about it. It's been a immensely difficult year for snow removal and yet we have maintained uh, that that street has stayed clearer than I would, I would challenge a lot of the streets in the city of Northampton. We have been exceptionally diligent specifically because we have been working on there on a continuous basis. Why the exception? This is the largest historic attempt of preservation in the city of Northampton. It is a 12 million dollar project. It should be flaunted. It should be excelled any bank that's willing to come into a community and do a 12 million dollar renovation and what they're asking for is a sign out front to advertise their commitment to the neighborhood and to the city on a temporary basis i don't think it's too much to ask as far as the signs being obnoxious uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder 
if the signs need to be set farther back so they're closer to the building, they're going to be absorbed by the building. We're talking 63,000 square feet of four-story massive brick buildings. Uh, to that end, I think that we have worked very diligently to preserve in all weather, <laughs> in all seasons, the beauty of the campus. We have fulfilled our obligation. My ending comment is this. Whatever you folks decide, I'm happy with. That's okay. Thank you. <coughs> it seems to me that the, um, there, there are various uh, variables that are relate to the signage, uh, and they include um, the size. People know we brought that up. Um, the location, the exact location of the signage, which is indicated on the map that um, the start distributed. Uh, the orientation of the signage. Uh, Perpendicular or parallel to the street. The potential height of the signage, uh, including the standards of the sign. Um, and uh, also the duration of intended to display. I, mean, I wonder if there's a variable that I haven't. I think that's, that's very good. Okay, so it's <laughs> height, size, location, orientation, and duration. Um, that we have to uh, make a determination of. We have a request for um, non-standard uh, display for uh, a non-standard size for, uh, for a non-standard length, um, specifically um, for a, uh, for about a, just over a year uh, uh, display. Um, then you in, anticipate them coming down with ground with that uh, ribbon cutting. Um, I, I I would assume the grand question. opening that would come down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I mean, uh, you could set a date on that. I mean, I could, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, you could set a, a time. Okay. Time for that. Traditionally, they come down the day after the people move you know, the day of the river. Yeah. When nobody is gonna. There's no real use for them after that. When will when will um a, a demo unit? Be first made available. Yeah, Th this is a an enormous bone of contention with the construction manager. Uh, uh, <laughs> I would have had one yesterday. You want sooner? You well, want sooner? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see one uh, uh, prior to, to Christmas. I I certainly I'm of the belief, and uh, I may just be immensely optimistic that um, you know most of these units will be pre-leased prior to the actual grand grand opening. Um, so I, I'm hoping that. Uh, we have a good, a good spring next spring, and I, mm -hmm. I would I would assume that a lot of these would would come down. So the primary marking period is presumably going to be between December. It's coming December. Yeah. And in the following May. Yeah, I, I think May into June. Um, mm -hmm. I, th oh, I oh, think 2015 basically. Well, actually, the adver it has to start this this September, at, at this end of August and September. Because you know people are coming out of leases, they need time to prepare. So you really have a year cycle of getting people mm -hmm. to start thinking about it. I mean, uh, you know, from an advertising and marketing point of view, people need seven different forms of reminders of what's taking place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the website will be interactive, and we hope to capture people in their emails and st stay interactive. And in fact, the website will also be used for construction updates and of what's taking place and what's going on. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of uh, project signage up there now? Uh, no, we have nothing. Okay. We have nothing. The only thing that's up there is the pre-existing sign brackets without the hangers. We actually use it to hang the notices from the city up now. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, that's about it. No. Okay, well let's go around again and, and talk about, uh, again, it was uh, height, size, location, orientation, and direction. I think the residents have a preference for how these signs are orient, you know, oriented, whether perpendicular to the street or parallel to the building. See, my only preference would be that I not see them out my kitchen window. <laughs> it seems to me it would be better that you could see them when you're driving up and down the street that, so you're not stopping in front of the building to look at them. Okay. Because I know that that's always a concern of people stopping, you know, on the street right in, in that area. So mm -hmm. if you could see them as you're driving, you're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. So that would be perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Bear in mind that the, and I just as a comment that to, to, to stimulate discussion, uh, basically Opal can put up whatever it wants for, for 90 days at will. Uh, it being a good neighbor and hasn't put anything up yet, uh, but uh, it, it can, it can uh, without uh, um, coming before us, to do mm -hmm. you know, any kind of reasonable sign for 90 days. Oh, there's no size restriction on that? No. I thought there was a size restriction. No. No? No. 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 Not for temporary size. 10,000 square feet. <laughs> it, would, it would still have to meet all the city's sign ordinances. Um, so, so uh, one one thought does occur to me that, that delaying the, the um, beginning of the permission to a time closer to when people will actually be looking at it and using it is one is one concept to consider. I'm not necessarily proposing that, but um, if if people are, are in fact not even beginning to think of it as a, as a viable. Um, um, retail option for themselves until September or October of this coming year, then uh, perhaps that would be the time to, to start the, the, that special permit. But, um, well, we know we're not going to be able to get into the ground for another month and a half. <laughs> okay, sure. Next, yeah. McClark School has a sign that is within the city ordinance, and there's no problem seeing it um, if you're driving less than 50 miles an hour. Uh, so that uh, I don't think that uh, we need to go outside of the city ordinance. Yeah, I would comment. I think that, um, um, first of all, I mean, this is a major historic preservation project for Northampton. And I think that with its successful completion, this is going to be the first of a lot because we have a lot of buildings in Northampton that have the potential for this type of redevelopment. Um, so I would want to do anything to encourage that. Um, and I think the fact that it's moving along, that these, the developer is a good neighbor developer trying to work with this, I think it's great. I think my problem is not with the duration during construction. I think that's appropriate. That happens all over the country. Uh, my concern is with the scale. And just to give a sense, you know, I'm about six feet high, so we're talking this high, and well, I it's a ten foot board. Yeah, yeah, this looks like about a four by eight right here, yeah. up at this height, and to me, that's more than you really need. I think if something was like this and like this, it would work. So my only objection to what's been presented um, is the size. And I would prefer to see the size reduced down to what is either the ordinance requirement or something that is less than the four by eight. I would tend to echo Bruce. I think a four by eight sign is appropriate at a high, high level of traffic and traffic speed location. In a neighborhood road where traffic calming has already been built in and it was What's normal? 15, 20 miles an hour there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, 20. Well, this could be, be about sure. scaled scale down a little bit. Yeah, three by six is probably fine. You know, it's just my take on it. I agree. I think that the sign is it's huge as, as it point. is. So I think that it should be, I think it would be more appropriate to scale it down. Okay, and do you have a specific size in mind? I don't. Um, I, I'd like to stick to even numbers. <laughs> okay. Like to Scalability numbers. just okay. to keep it even. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, the three by six or four by I think seven. we need to see what is the uh, city's ordinance uh, maximum and whatever that works out to be. Yeah, that's, that's, that's I might have it. It's pretty small. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty yeah, that, that one. I think four 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 no, I think it's small, isn't it? Yeah, smaller? in residential yeah. areas, it shall not exceed 12 square feet in surface areas. 12, so that would be four, 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 four. And that's the size of the Clark School something. Yeah, and I think that would probably be small for this purpose. Uh, but four by eight is okay. over the top. Well, I would agree it should be smaller. I also see the, the um, if one sign is allowed, by and this, this is by ordinance for the sign, I don't see any reason to 
want to have two of them. I mean, I understand why you want to have two of them. Well, it's one per building. Our planning, oh, it's, one, it's one per building. Oh, okay. So you can have two. And we've pulled two permits, so we've never, we've not trained the okay. building. Okay, all right. Well. This says something about a special permit. That you're going to be getting a special permit for the planning board for more than one sign on a parcel. So this does indicate that that's... They're two separate parcels. It may have been written up that way, but my interpretation of it, and we could double check it on Thursday, is that for each parcel, you, mm -hmm. for each building and parcel, you get one sign. Is that, yeah. is that yeah. connecting yeah. Reedway still, or well, not Reedway, but connecting um, corridor still there? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's still there. Okay. It's one building when you look at it. Okay. Well, if that's true, why is the saying you need a special permit? For it, it's side. going for a special permit, and that's already been determined. But that's a separate discussion from the historical commission review. Yeah, it's different addresses, two separate buildings. It has an annex building for an elevator, but it doesn't share anything else. It's don't. I would concur with the sign, uh, the size being the biggest issue here. Um, I four by six. Still creates the exact same height, um, and that would be a problem. I mean, I understand wanting to keep it scalable. Um, three by six would seem more reasonable to me, but but it. Okay, are there comments from the committee members on um, height above ground? Bruce, you came closest to speaking to that. Um, well. There's that's, a sign height, and then there's a sign. That's post. pretty much what you're looking at at a, a four by eight four feet or so above the ground. Um, so I think it becomes a, you know, a maintenance thing. Can you run a mower under it or kids going to get at it or something? Um, you know, it's between three and four feet I think would be appropriate. I don't have a problem with that. Particularly if it's going to be only during construction. So bottom of the sign, four feet off ground. Okay. I have no problem. Okay. Just, just, so just here, on five feet tall. So it's that's here, yeah. which just seems to be that if you're sitting in a car, that's kind of high. And, 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 and also, I know we're going out there, but, but I, I mean, I, I live near the um, former state hospital, so I, I'm not in a position where out my kitchen window I see signs, but you know, I certainly walk in that neighborhood as it's being developed, and you know, nobody really wants these kinds of signs in their neighborhood, and so I'm really sympathetic with that. But I'm thinking of the sorts of signs that have been there when, um, I think I pass this sign all the time, and why can't I think of who's building the bungalow area, what they call the bungalow area. Mm. Anyway, it Pico or what? Pico. 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 And their signs are much smaller, and they're pretty close to the ground, because they're aimed, it seems to me, better at somebody either walking by, biking by, or driving by. They're not these signs that are way off the ground. And I'm trying to think of how big that sign is, and it's really visible. You know, it depends on what colors you paint something, what kind of contrast you have. Their signs seem pretty visible to me. Um, so that would be my comment again on the size and uh, height, I think, should be lower to, to not be so. I mean, theirs aren't, one of their signs is really two feet. You walk by and you know, the sign is sort of at my eye level. So yeah, maybe it's only about They're more like house for sale signs. Oh, it's, it's advertising that yeah. whole development. No, no, I'm not talking about the ones that are each house or anything. But I, I, I think if you, if you drive up there, I haven't spent as much time mm -hmm. as you up there, but quite a bit. Um, the issue up there is, I mean, just multiple signs between Wright and Pico. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you may be looking at 20 different signs around the neighborhood because they have for sale sign on every piece of property or a development sign on every vacant piece of property up there. No, I understand there are a lot of signs, right. So I'm, but I'm saying that some of these signs are much smaller, which I think helps a little bit, that there aren't just these, I mean, there's, there's nothing, I don't think in that, in that area, I don't think there's anything this size or this height above the ground. There just isn't, so. Can, can I ask another question? With the height off of the ground, it seems like we're talking about like a three by six for the sign, and now we're discussing the height off the ground, uh, either three or four feet. Does it make a difference how close to the road the sign is? Because um, three feet is a little low, even for, for maintenance under a sign and getting around it. And the, and they seem to be doing it up there. 
you know, so do we have grass growing under these signs? Or you know, well, most of those signs up there are hanging signs. So they and the actual sign across the street is much. They're, they're bracketed signs with hangers. So they're four by fours that uh, stick out of the ground about four and a half feet. They have a cross bracket with two hooks. Mm -hmm. So oh, all yeah, the signs are removable. The there are different kinds of signs. Yeah. But, anyway. but I guess my only question is, if the sign was set closer to the building itself, would there be a preference? Would there not be? Would there be any problem with that sign coming up four feet? But if it was closer to the road, road on the property, staying lower at the three feet. Bruce? No, I have no problem with that. And you know, I, I, I'm just looking at something that um, you know, eventually would be limiting the, the size to three to four feet, um, uh, three feet um, above the ground, between three and four feet above the ground. And to exist during the duration of the construction. I mean, we could always put it in at the four feet, come back. If folks don't like it, we'll take it yeah. down. I mean, that's not, I mean, I it's not a biggie for us. Sort of a, 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 a human scale. And um, yeah. um, at seven feet, which the top would be if it were a three by six sign, at seven feet, that becomes a bit <laughs> something, something that not even the ordinary person is seeing. Okay. Above. So three feet yeah. off the ground? Yeah. yeah. Just one second, let me just go around and then okay. talk with Colin. Do you have a comment so far on, the, on this detail? I think three feet. I, prefer, I think a three foot sign off the, three feet off the ground okay. would be my preference. So, kind of a, from a planning perspective, we've had an interpretation that these are two different parcels, therefore, two different signs are by right permitted. Is that's, that a, that's a planning board question. What? That would be a planning board question. We're just looking at whether this meets the criteria for the historic district. Okay. But it still will need this. So are we going, are we uh, in, in the discussions we're having tonight, are we going beyond what we should be doing? A little bit. What? A little bit. <laughs> I'm not gonna A little bit, yes. What, what are the, what are, where are the, is the boundary of where we should be talking about then? We should just be considering the impact on the historic district and whether there's any adverse visual impact and whether it's compatible with the character of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think that can be answered in one word. Well, my, my, my feeling is that this is an historic district and it signs an impact the district as little as possible um, because they are anomalous to the, to the district. Yeah. What right. I would say to the board, I'm sorry to interrupt, but just to make it easier for you, is that we would still, listen, we advocated for a historic district. We believe in a historic district. Regardless of if planning said we could do a four by six to the road, if this board, you know, comes up with a standard, that's what we're going to recommend on Thursday to the board. So whatever we get well, we'll from weigh, this board, yeah. well, we're going to recommend. Thank you for that comment. I appreciate it. That shows sensitivity where we're dealing. With. Yeah. Um, and and what I, I also wanted to say that we are dealing with this balance between the um, the latitude that we are, we are given uh, in our in our mandate. Um, to uh, uh, to make some decisions. It's not black and white as to what uh, we will permit or not permit. But it's, it's a deliberate process, and we do uh, we are sensitive to the issues that Bruce brought up and, and you brought up uh, about the um, uh, recognition of the fact that we approve of, of the reuse of uh, buildings and preserving the historic facades of those buildings. Um, and also um, uh, wanted you credit or had no objection to giving credit to a local bank that has uh, helped me support that. So there's no core opposition to, to, to any sign. It's just a matter of trying to exercise our, our stewardship of, of the, uh, of, of the uh, basic values of the neighborhood though. Um, Jan, what well, would you I was just going to say that in uh, the city ordinance 350-7.3, which is about signs permitted in a residential district, they're, they're very specific about um, the top of the sign shall not rise more than five feet above the ground or sidewalk within five feet of the sign, shall be located on private property and set back at least 15 feet from any street lot line, etc. Okay. She's absolutely the, right. The, Unfortunately, the, 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 the this is not a residential. Yeah. This is a mixed use. 
And then that would also be the planning board's consideration. But but as Demetrius knows, this isn't a residential district. It's not U R C. The the Clark property itself is not correct. No, it's under a special mixed use, as determined by the planning board. We're given a special mixed use. It's half yeah. commercial, half residential. So I thought it could only be 20%. But, but in any case, that would be a planning 20% board. retail. Okay, let me work through the list that we, we established earlier. Height, I think I'm hearing a consensus of, of a maximum of six feet. Size, um, I'm hearing of 18 square feet. Three by six. Yeah. Um, location, I think I'm hearing that, that because of the interpretation of two lots that the uh, existing schematic or diagram lays out. Um, uh, let me see, if you've seen those again, so these are where we would anticipate that it'd be uh, in front of the two buildings that everyone can even throw in the uh, being worked on. Um, Three feet off. The, to me, that leaves the significant issue that I, I do want to talk about, and that is sort of the timing and duration of the display. Um, do, we, do we think about this as being something that is permitted immediately and, and is up for um, a year and a quarter? Or do we think of this as something that is, um, uh, because this is, I mean, this not only, the signage not only benefits local and it's good and it's good work on the thing but it also is mm -hmm. simultaneously it's also a detriment to to the visual um uh perspective of the district uh at the same time so we want to be careful with this yeah i i would um, need to know when does the city determine that a project is completed is that at such time they issue an occupancy yeah. permit well i would say that to me, that would be when construction is completed. At such time as an occupancy can permit is issued. Okay, so the CO is the, is the end date, right? Yeah. Okay, and what should be the start date? Or is there a phase in? Is there? Well, it's under construction now, so I would say tomorrow you will have to put up the stuff. Well, that's that try. <laughs> yeah, I'm not digging that hole. I agree with Bruce. Can start immediately. Can be the signs can be put in the ground right now. Any notion for uh, delaying until it's it's uh, not a construction project but a uh, a marketing project? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What's the time frame? Mark, May, so right June. now you're in demolition phase. We're in demolition. We're under. We're operating under demolition. Okay, about permit. five more weeks. Of demolition. Five more weeks of demolition. Yeah. Five more weeks of demolition. It's about the right time for the ground to start towing. So five more weeks. Where does that take you to? Like into April. Into yeah. April. April. Okay. I think the nature of this construction process, you're not going to see a lot of construction. Mm -hmm from no. the exterior, it's all going to be interior. Um, so I, I think it, it's kind of moot as to when you say construction has started, because technically it started right now, with the first phase being the demolition process. But, you know, we also have, I mean, who knows, God willing, we don't have much more snow, but um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'd be, you know, we'd be fine with anything from May 1st on. I mean, it's, it really is that would be fine. I guess it's May, June, July. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a model open, a model open. The model will be first Next on the year. website. Will um, be first on the website. Yeah. Okay. Don't. And when will someone actually be able to step into the real, <laughs> the real model? Oh, uh, I, I, I think I think um, you'll be able to start touring by the end of next February, March into the locations the we won't have the CO yet but we'll have you, you'll be at 90% completion into 95% completion 
the last part of this goes really quick, the, the last of the carpet and the, although we did just find out that we can preserve all the floors and all the wood floors are in great shape and yeah. Okay, other. So, to, okay, well, I'm just, so to put signs oh. out right now, when all you'll see is a website version, you, neither of you have an issue with that. What's your thinking? Well, I don't know. It seems maybe it's a little early, just in deference to the neighbors and the neighborhood. You know, they're going to be living with the signs for a while. And, you know, I'm. If the signage could be delayed a little bit, maybe until they get closer to, you know, when there'll actually be something to walk into physically, you know, that might be, that might be considered, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If timing is an issue too, the commission could always put a, a maximum amount, so from one year to the issue, from the issuance of the permit, and then they'd also have to be gone if construction work done before that. I twice stepped on your toes and I apologize oh, for that. Oh, that's okay. And I, you were pausing and thinking and I apologize for that. Uh, can I move on? Or? Okay. okay. I, I was thinking that I'd also like to see some sort of mitigation for the, um, for the neighborhood in terms of not having the sign there as long. And I'm not, I mean, I understand you're marketing it, you know, well before it's really there, and you you don't want to wait till, okay, there's a model apartment or a model condo open, we can put the sign up now. I understand you don't you, you, you can't afford to wait that long, right. but and and we're probably talking about you not being able to put the sign in for a while anyway till okay. the snow. But we'd like to catch a good one. And when when are you thinking the um, the end of your construction would be? You, you I think we'll be thing? relatively close to being completed by by this time next year. So, I'm sorry, and so this is February. So we're talking about a year. Yeah. If we issued you the permit now, we could say it can only be up for a year. Well, I, I wouldn't. I, I would like the permit issued for you know good weather. I mean, we don't. We, we wouldn't want anything up before May. Well, I'm saying if we said May, we could decide either okay, it can stay for a year, it can stay till next May, or we could decide we only want to see it up for nine. And we. But anyway, it's, I, I would certainly like to see it delayed at least on this end because it seems in some ways not very effective to have it up now when there isn't much going. You don't even have your plan on your website. You know, so I'm, I'm trying to think of how to you know, spare the, the, the impact on the neighborhood of having this sign, this big advertising sign. It could be. Beginning right. May 1st, valid for a year, and also to be removed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Right. So that's being maximum said this year. year. Yeah, I think mean, yeah, that phrasing is perfectly mm -hmm. good. So that's exactly what I was going to think. Yeah. It can be the sign, can it be placed so that it would be visible from their window? And at least on a, the narrow side of the sign, the most unobtrusive possible placement. Is that possible? Instead of broad face to their window. I would have but to be that by me again. Placing. But I thought they were talking about putting it parallel to the building so that you could no. see it. No. Oh, no, we are talking, I'm sorry, I misled you. Yeah. So we're the talking the placement of the sign I'm perpendicular sorry. to the building well, okay. should be sorry. placed as best you can to okay. not negatively mm -hmm. impact their vision from their window. And whether that means skewing it slightly in some kind of a view just to make sure that it's a, that the narrowest possible vision. I, I want to, for full disclosure, I want to be completely honest, that I can barely draw a straight line. <laughs> so you have completely confused me. Um, but I understand the gist. Okay. And I, no one has commented on, I assume there's no problem with signage on both sides of the sign. Anybody in mind? Um, we talked about a variety. Is there any other thing that, or, or variable that people would like to talk about or bring up that we have not brought up yet? What were the dimensions that we agreed on? Three, with this consensus was three, three by six. And three, and three feet off the ground. Well, and, not and more at the top, three, would be, the top would be no higher than six feet. 
which includes the offset in it. What is the, um, what, we have it all over Springfield and, and Westfield now, but what is the um, standard in the, in the city for identifying a historic district? Well, there are signs at the, at the uh, two ends of the Elm Street Historic District that were done by, by the uh, previous commissioners in their street you know, It's about that big on a thin pole. They're like no parking signs, vertically or metal signs. And the color are they color. the brass signs? Are you volunteering to? I, am, I sure am. Uh, yeah. a bronze, I think the bronze cast. I would like. Well, I'd like to see something. Oh. At the at the time. I don't know if I'm using the word right. Something a little sexy. I mean, I don't want to see a no parking. Take, take a look at those. I mean, they're they're neat. They're black with white letters. Where, where can I see it at Elm Street? There's, there's one outside yeah. of St. Mary's. And one yeah. down the one by St. Mary's, Mary's. Is the closest. Okay. It's, it's on St. Mary's coming this coming. Uh, going into the historic district, going towards around the world. Yeah, we would be very open to doing something different than this. Is uh, that what you're saying? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm doing, saying that we don't have do signage do. identifying that you're entering a new historic district. Oh, okay. Round Hill Historic. All right. Um, whatever it's called. Would they be placed at the existing Clark School signage? I, well, coach? I think they would have to. They have to be at the entrance of the boundary of the historic district. I, I could get you the specs for those. Okay. Yeah, we'd love to see them if we could. If we could, as part of our, but the boundary we'd love to look at that. that hill is is now blended with the previous boundary. So wouldn't it be from the, the opposite? The side? boundary would be coming up from uh, five. Forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah, it's in our best interest because we we, we yeah. have determined that the long-term identification is historic. No, that that's a very friendly uh, mm -hmm. offer. Thank you. Well, yeah, we brought that up. Did you, were you responsible for, the, for designing and setting this? The Elm Street Historic District Commission Science? did that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Martha, Martha Lyons did the design. Oh, okay. yeah. I was going to just say that, I don't know, you know, as far as trying to make your signs more attractive and more consistent with the luxury aspect of the apartments, um, instead of putting in, you know, these kind of ugly frame, ugly metal framework signs, I mean, there are some uh, construction companies around town who, you know, have gone, done a little bit more with their signage and put in some nice posts with finials, um, you know, to that, and they're just more consistent with the projects that are going on. And that might make the signage maybe. I'm willing to look at it. If you've got something that you can send me that you're referring to. Construct. Chris Thompson. Chris Thompson. Right. 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 It's you know just not as commercial looking. He's watching this as right now. He probably is. I <laughs> um, Yeah, I, it's a good point. I'll if we can. It's, it's a nice looking. It's a if nice we can taste design. it up, I have no control over People's Bank. They mm -hmm. they control the marketing, but certainly our sign, we can do that. Mm -hmm. I can ask them to do that. They're, they're pretty good. Mm -hmm. But we'll I take just, another crack at it. I just think it, it promotes an, you know it's a nice image. And it presents itself nicely. Well, what type of material? You know, you're working on a multi-million dollar project. I think you should have a nice sign out in front. They're, um, they're they MDF board, board like paper. yours, but they have finishing details that weatherproof the sign for the length of the project at hand. Yeah, there's some trim work. There could be some trim work around them. The posts might have, you know. Well, instead of them doing the sign like this, what we probably would do is we would bracket the the, the post. And we would cut the inseam and set one sign, both sides, inside, and then put a trim piece across the top. Uh, that is better. I think you can yeah. have yeah. better. You got it. And we can, and the, uh, the four by four we would paint. We'll paint it like a hunter green. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, when should this start? This is a question that hasn't been resolved. We've had what the first of May sounds good. First of May, is that the so the Kentucky so Derby day? If, if, we're, if we're wrapping up, not to push it, but um, so it sounds like it, the commission is leaning towards 
determining that this is compatible with the character of the district and issuing a certificate of appropriateness, provided that the signs do not exceed three feet by six feet with the top still higher than six feet off the ground, and that the permit will be valid from May 1st, May 1st of this year for one year and must be removed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Let me ask you a question, good faith. You, you have 90 days by right. If we say start May 1st, yeah. would you be exercising your right for some free time in a sense and, and put it in tomorrow or you know next week? Do I strike you as that kind of a guy? I have no idea. First of all, I have learned I'm a terrible I will, I will do exactly what we said we would do. Were, were it the same sign, that would be a violation of this permit. Yeah. Anyway. Considering the fact that I'm probably going to be in front of you 20 times in the next yeah. 10 years, <laughs> I don't think that would be so wise on my part. But I think, I think you know, please bear in mind, um, you said a lot of things that I really appreciate and, and I, I trust them, um, but, but also appreciate the comments and the sentiment expressed tonight, which I think are not sentiments that were NIMBY kind of uh, comments. They were comments that were made in the spirit of the, of the, um, the neighborhood and the historic preservation of the neighborhood. Um, so uh, to the extent that you can make a historically sensitive and, and appropriate sign that doesn't look too much like the classic four by eight that's nailed up on the, on the jack posts with the, you know, with the electrical drop you know, that we see in every you know, big construction site, um, to the extent that it can look like a decent high-end sign, that would be great. And, uh, well, I, I will reiterate, I am a fanatical preservationist, and um, you folks have always been more than reasonable. Okay. Uh, and I try to balance that between my responsibilities to be commercially successful and... Uh, well, we, we recognize that, and, and um, it, it is a special place. It's, um, it, you know, this is not the kind of sign that uh, you'd be putting up on um, Russell, um, you know, with the, the I don't get me in trouble because I, I, I went to Hopkins Academy, so you got to be careful when you start talking about that. Well, no, but you're going to get me in trouble with my no, on on, on the you know by the property that's uh, uh, there on Route Nine in Hadley. That, that yeah. that's our commercial brokerage, not our. Oh, not you. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's our commercial development. Uh, uh, well, where you would expect to see a big, uh, big uh, <laughs> regular commercial uh, sign. So if you can tone this down. Okay. Um, David, we do need a motion for the certificate. I'm making a motion. I'm leading up to it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can't make a motion. Someone else has to. Okay. Um, is pulling together the height, size, location, orientation, and duration uh, components of it? Would someone like to make a motion? So moved according to the notes of staff. Is there a second? Okay. Is there a vote? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No opposition. Right. Thank you. I look forward to having all of you through before our grand opening so you can see what we did inside and, Very good. and what's, uh, what's happening. I think we'll be very pleased. I've been involved with historic preservation for 40 years or so. And we always say the only people who preserve buildings are people who can write checks. Right? It's an expensive business. It is. But it's well, worth it at the end. It will be a special uh, development, and I think it will be very high quality of living for those people who are fortunate to move in. Thank you. And um, I will stand to your credit. Thank you. Except, you know, my wife keeps trying to pick out an apartment that she designs for 15 <laughs> years from now when we uh, retire, and I'm uh, saying, you can't do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, I had a question. Are you reviewing tonight at all the Elm Street air conditioner? Um, I thought that was actually not we, we We talked about, we were under the impression that that had been tabled because of the request of the uh, petitioner. It's continued until March 31st. That was our first cast. I didn't hear that. We're looking at it Saturday. But okay. according to the process, that was a very interesting process. I have to say. But um, according to the process, that hearing actually is not is is open, even though. Mm -hmm. No? I can't talk about it now. It's continued. No, it's continued. It's, oh, well, it's, yes, now it's, but now it's continued until the, the 31st. Thank you. 
It's always useful to have a parliamentarian. <laughs> See you next month. Yeah. So, okay. um, anyway, we welcome your comments at our, at our work meeting. If you would like yep. to take part in it at that point. Okay. And if you'd like to say, and continue you try, trying to say, <laughs> you're very welcome to say. Yeah. Well, I find it very interesting. We just bought uh, maybe three years ago, three years ago, a house on Elm Street, and we're yeah. we're redoing it. And Are you it's, doing it's, what number? Yeah, yeah um, 222 Elm Street, the old uh, Golobs. Um, oh, yes. Property. Oh, good work. And, yeah, the yeah, brick on the bottom and uh, Cedar Shades. Shake on the top. Yeah. Right on the corner of Harrison and Elm. Oh, the, wow. The house with the most knob and tube wiring in the city. Oh. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> wow. I'm very familiar with that. So, yeah. So, we're, I mean, I, I know I'll be coming here because we, we work a lot on the inside and we want to get going on the outside in the near future, so okay. well, we part education. Uh, uh, we're delighted to meet you then, and, yeah. and uh, you have a real investment in the, in the yeah. district. Um, please feel free to use us for guidance instead of, and not just as a, as a, as a great literary body, okay. uh, because there's a lot of uh, great wisdom, not yep. including me, but around this table, so um, before you go in any particular yep. direction. It'd be great to, to come in and pitch it. Uh, Bruce is a registered uh, architect and uh, well, technically I've let my license last. The last is the last now that I hit my um, yeah. seven <laughs> <laughs> But his advice is still just as good. Uh, so I can, um, I can call myself an architect, but I cannot practice an architect. Uh, but anyway, uh, come on and, and yep. uh, you know let us give you some advice so that uh, we're not the last people you see, but perhaps yeah. you know among the first. Yeah, okay. yeah we like to do those workshop sessions. So if you come in with some ideas, you're yep. thinking of this or that or something else. Yep. It's much better to do it informally than when yeah. you come in and we say, oops, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you look at a copy of the guidelines for the district. Oh no, we have them. Okay, great. Next, um, I have an agenda for new staff issue permits. We have no staff issue permits, and we did not get an email. Good. Okay. Other business not foreseen when agenda was prepared. Two brief things. Great tradition, but I have joined the board of Historic Northampton. Congratulations. Jumped in with two feet. Anyway, so uh, Craig and I are now both on that board. Titanic. And what? Titanic. Well, it's not quite Titanic. Uh, very good. It feels like that a little bit sometimes. Um, I've only attended one meeting so far. Um, and I just wanted to let people know, I think we all got notices about, or maybe not, that Tom Riddell's class, his first year seminar on the state hospital, did its presentations at Smith on Saturday afternoon. I thought it came to me. I think as a mailing to the commission. Yeah. I mean, I, don't, I mean, it's just, I mean, sometimes it's it's really interesting to go to these, and I did, and I did attend, and there were actually two students who were concerned with the state of the burial grounds and of the um, the bench, and had some ideas, but um, and I spoke to those issues and told them that I really hoped this spring the stone bench will go in, but there was there were also two three students who worked together to get some oral histories from former employees of the hospital. And they had these, you know, they videotaped hours and then uh, did, um, you know, edit, they showed us very brief edited parts of them. And it was really interesting. They had a very good set of questions for them and they had three very articulate people that they showed us clips from. I don't know if they did more than three people, but, because um, these are first year, these are 18 year olds who are doing this and they, they were, this one was one of the more impressive mm -hmm. ones. They aren't always as impressive. Yeah. And then there was another student who, just for the past month, has started helping to write former patient profiles for the ServiceNet newsletter, I guess on their website. So she um, didn't actually do the interviews with the patients, but she's helping to craft these narratives to go online. So those were two of the more really Im impressive mm -hmm. uh, things that Tom's class did. Any word yet on the... Uh, the the bowl planting? Uh, actually, that student was there, but she didn't say anything else about where they stand because they're still, I suppose, still arguing with Smith Volk okay. about whether bulbs are invasive. Or that has to be done in the fall, anyway. That has to be yeah, done in the fall. Do, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, you generally plant those in the fall. But anyway, um, and the memorial committee is going to meet next week, I think, is our next meeting, the 4th. 
Well, I have one, one other item. I was uh, contacted by phone out of the blue with from Representative from Boston from the Mass Historical Commission about our attitude about the preservation of the, the dam, uh, the Robert Meadow Dam. And they um, wanted to be of assistance if we felt that this was an item that, we, that, that, that was important to the, to the Historical Commission for preservation. And I thought we talked about this a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, many times, and if you sat on the, <laughs> right. if you sat on the yeah. Community Preservation Committee, you probably discussed it even more. Um, it came out multiple times. Um, but the, the, the call was pleasant, but I was taken aback because I thought that this was a fait accompli. Um, and the, the, the individual I spoke with, the gentleman at MHC, felt that it was not a fait accompli and that, that um, I, and I tried to express that I couldn't speak for the for the uh, group, obviously, uh, but that my uh, you know, saying pretty much what, what you just said, Craig, and that, that we're, we had thought that this was a settled issue and, and that we didn't really have a voice anymore in the, in the process because the state dam safety board had, had indicated that it had to be taken down. Well, it either has to be repaired or taken down, and I'm that's, up, that's up to the dam owner, which is the state. Yeah. Well, there's, there's other stuff going on around the state, and I believe the state EOEA, or EEA, is coming around to the idea to better fund, through the state, dam restoration projects, because the Belchertown Land Trust just melted down because they were captured by a dam that they owned and the state was commanding that they take it down and an advocacy organization sprung up to save the dam and they had greater success in Belchertown by killing off the land trust who owned it than, than local dam efforts here. And I think the state is coming around and actually I'm organizing a conference in Clinton in April that'll uh, be at the right almost within sight of the Wachusa Reservoir Dam and the thousand foot tunnel that leads to Northampton here. And uh, Secretary Sullivan will be there, so I may say something about that. Hmm. I mean, it, essentially it's, a, it's the responsibility of the dam owner to hire an engineering company to do a study of what needs to be done, either maintenance of, of the dam if that's possible, which it wasn't in this case, or repair or removing it. And removing it was the recommendation of the engineering so what does that do to the ecology? What, do, what effect does that have on the ecology? In the long term, it's, it's definitely beneficial. It's better for the yeah. ecology to remove. And in the short term, it's going to look horrible. But, <laughs> but in the long term, it restores yeah, fisheries and river connectivity. Specialists want free flowing rivers. And, okay. um, at this point, it's, it's nothing but a, it's a large sort of earthen wedge because it's completely silted in. So the water the flows that. across yeah. the top of it and then goes down, it, it's, not a, it's not a true reservoir anymore um, because of the silt levels apparently. But, I mean, I tried to express to him that, that it was, like many dams, it um, both, was both historic in its creation, uh, and uh, we discussed the first dam built after the, the, uh, the great um, Williamsburg flood, um, but it also destroyed some communities that were behind it, uh, some structures that had been upriver from it, um, and that uh, it was not particularly accessible or visible. Um, there was no parking that was uh, available to, to view it or enjoy it. Um, and that the primary source of uh, uh, support had been people who knew it, who were necessarily uh, to no fault of their own, but who were residents in, in the immediate area of the dam. Um, but that we would we would discuss it. I, I don't know. What, what's your where do things stand now? Is it DPW is moving forward with plans to have it removed? Have it removed. And MHC was still hoping to have a response from us, though. Is that not that I know of? And the commission has discussed it and I believe written a letter, but they were just going back and forth. With okay. DPW. So it, it, can I be directed not to follow this up? I think it's the water over the dam. 
In, in that damned case, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a sieve. <laughs> they may have been training in a local perspective to see if there was mm -hmm. some sort of internal fight in the city or something. I have a sense that there is some Boston level fight going on between <laughs> MHC and the damned people. Probably. Didn't we weigh in with a letter to support mm -hmm. the dam restoration if possible years ago? I think I if think so. possible. But that was what more was determined was right. not possible. But the possible and the not possible in terms of dollars was very close. It wasn't that far off the mark, really. I think there may have been a very big gap because it would also have to be addressed. Yeah. It can't be maintained as is. Oh, the maintenance factor yeah. in here. But just from our historic perspective, I mean, we must have written a letter. Because the couple were here all the time. At, at the time that the friends of the dam made a proposal to the CPC for money for preservation, we did issue a letter saying that we, uh, if, if the dam could be preserved, um, we thought it was a good idea because it was a historic structure in town. Uh, generally, if Mass Historic wants an opinion, they they don't hesitate to write a letter, so they should. I mean, I guess we should just wait. Mm -hmm. So, is, is there is there a motion? That I should let this drop. I don't think. Well, no, he was. He was. <laughs> if you need a motion, you would. I would second it. If you need okay. A motion. To, to make no. To make the motion to make no further advances. No. Okay. And uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Move <laughs> no, but thank you. It's official. And just want to comment on what you were saying about Tom Rydell's class. Yes. Uh, the library, in the last couple of weeks, we just got a donation of a set of cabinet cards of the State Hospital from the 1890s. Wow. Interiors, wow. patients sitting at the end of the Sunny Hall, a whole set of them. So we're going to be, uh, it's the great, great uncle was a doctor there in the 1890s. He died of typhoid fever at the hospital. Huh. Um, and they were put together as a Christmas huh. album, sort of, and huh. tied together. Huh. So she found them when somebody was cleaning wow. the house, right. donated them to us. Huh. So we're going to put them on display in a glass case for the next month with a poster from the State Hospital. Yeah. So where's it going to be? Are they going to go on your website? Yeah. Just gonna have to yeah. Will this be in public so areas of the library? No, it's a music department in the little glass case where we put up our poster collection. Okay. What like was that. it? Christmas sentences? They, they were just pictures taken around the state hospital. There's uh, a couple of exteriors. There's uh, one of some uh, more, what I assume are workers, although they could be patients, uh -huh. eating in the middle of like a snowy field with trees. Uh -huh. um, a few of patients sitting at the end, and it just says like a sunny spot. Uh -huh. um, one of the patients from a couple of his office. Um, but did you say there were some exterior ones? There's, there's some exteriors, but they're really from the same perspective. You're still all looking for the obelisk, right? You want to try and figure <laughs> well, out where that is. Well, interestingly, the there's ground. one from the perspective of the couple of huh. looking out down huh. at 66 as it comes down the hill, oh. and you can see how little hmm. building it was at that point. Oh, but but they're, they're amazing because we had nothing like no yeah, interiors in our collection. Oh, so I just wanted to let Mr. Northampton, Tom yeah, Riddell, yeah. you, yeah. you know. Great. Who know. found them, did you say? A relative of the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, she, I've been oh, filling, doctor who uh, the, the Coolidge Archivist hospital. is okay. on maternity <laughs> leave and I've been filling in for her, so she just called one day. And so I said you think from the 1890s? I know, they're, oh, they're oh, dated, yeah. which is great. So I Small trivia point. I was doing research on an individual who, you know, late in life, came back to Northampton, and apparently the hospital was used as a, it was like a shelter part of it. Uh, in other words, if you were kind of didn't have a place to stay and you were right. a respectable individual and it was not going to cause great problems, you could drop in and they would take care of you for the night. Um, which I didn't realize it was not all sort of inpatient right. uh, treatment. Um, is there anything else to discuss? We run late. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Then we are adjourned.